Good evening and welcome to Morris's Midweek Message. I don't know about you, but I find it hard to wait. I find it hard to wait in queues, particularly. Queuing for the till at the supermarket, I always pick the wrong queue. I hate it. I hate queuing in the car a traffic jam, I'd drive an extra few miles just to avoid that queue. But there are things about this season that we're in that we can't avoid and waiting is one of them. Waiting two metres apart to get into a supermarket is the norm at the moment. The irony is that There are no queues at the checkout. But waiting. Waiting at the moment is what most of us are doing. There are times when, as a child, you couldn't wait for things to happen. You couldn't wait for the summer holidays. You couldn't wait for your birthday to come around. You couldn't wait for Christmas. But now the majority of us spend a lot of time waiting. Particularly if you're living alone, this waiting time must be exceedingly difficult. But waiting, waiting in the Bible can be something very different very positive thing. I've got some verses from the Old and New Testaments that I want to share with you this evening. The first is the first verse of Psalm 40, for it speaks of waiting patiently. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. We've got to be patient at this time. Patient because of the situation we find ourselves in as a country, as individuals and as families. Patient before the Lord. Spending time with him. For he hears our cry. And it's a time when we can turn to him like maybe we have never turned to him before. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me as much as me turning to him. And he heard my cry. We're also called to wait in hope. There's a wonderful verse in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 31 that says this, but those who wait or hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is about waiting in hope, in expectation that these difficult days will pass. Waiting in hope is important. For our great hope is in God's salvation. And no matter what this life throws up for us, we have this sure and certain hope that in Christ we will go to be with him, that this earthly life is not all there is. One day, indeed, we will soar on wings like eagles. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not be faint. Waiting in hope. And then in the New Testament, Jesus before he ascends to heaven, as Luke recounts in the first chapter of Acts, 
tells his disciples to wait. He says this in verse 4, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Waiting for the promised gift. The early disciples waited. They waited and prayed. They waited for 40 days or so in expectation and in hope, wondering what was going to happen. What way would this promise be fulfilled? What would the Holy Spirit do? And he did amazing and wonderful things in them. On that first Pentecost, God's Spirit came in power and filled them and sent them out from that upper room into the streets of Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit that came upon those believers on that first Pentecost is here with us today. That power that they experienced is also available to us because Jesus has said that we will be filled with his spirit. So let us wait in that promise. Pentecost Sunday this year is the 31st of May. It's a few weeks away, but maybe by then things will have changed somewhat. It may be that we are through the worst of this coronavirus pandemic and we'll be maybe be able to get out a bit more, maybe be able to visit with family again are they with us wouldn't it be wonderful on this pentecost if we too were able to leave our homes to be with our loved ones and they with us god works in his own time frame with his own plans and with his own purposes. But his promises always come true. And his promise to us today is that he is with us always. We are not alone because he hears our cry. Psalm 40, verse 1. We wait in hope because we will soar on wings like eagles. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not be faint. We wait in hope. And we wait in power. We wait in the power of the Holy Spirit. That when eventually this pandemic has passed, we God's people can proclaim with joy and thanksgiving and in power his wonderful truth. Maybe the world will be a little more willing to listen than it has for a while. Shall we pray? Father, most of us are somewhat impatient. We find it difficult to wait. But you have reminded us today that waiting can be something incredibly important. For when you speak, we will know it is your voice that is speaking. When you tell us to go, we will go because we are confident it is you who has called us to go. 
but for this while we wait. And we wait in hope and we wait in expectation. We are conscious though that there are, are those within our community who have to go and face this disease head on. For they work in our hospitals and in other services that put their lives in danger. Father, we pray for all when they leave their homes, face this hidden killer that stalks our homes, our nursing homes, our hospital wards, our streets at this time. Protect those who seek to bring healing and help. Father, we rejoice in the good news this week that so many have recovered from this virus, from the very young and premature babies to those who have exceeded a hundred years of age. We know that some have lost that fight and their families are in grief and in mourning. We pray for them and ask that you would bring your comfort and your strength to them. For we, your people, wait in hope and in expectation and in joy. Come and heal our land, we pray. Come and heal this world. And may the power of your Spirit be evident in the things that we say and do. And when the time comes for us to go, may we go into the world again in power and in strength. These prayers we offer through Jesus Christ our Lord.